Hi, I'm Gerard, and you're listening to The Voice of Truth Podcast, a media production of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Did God put away the seventh-day Sabbath? There is so much confusion around this issue. I do not claim to have the answers, but let us look at the scriptures to see what the scripture says. And how can we be guided by the scriptures? The perfect word of God. The word Sabbath is linked with confusion, as I said before. And this confusion can only be cleared when we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in studying the Bible. In an effort to obtain clarity, please let us seek some answers by these questions. The Bible mentions Sabbath and Sabbaths. What is the difference between both? Was the seventh day Sabbath given only to the Jews? Which of the Sabbaths did God reject and why? First, I would like to explain that the seventh day Sabbath was not given to the Jews or Israelites only. This day of rest and worship was given to our four parents, Adam and Eve. All of us are relatives, you know. We all come from one man and one woman, no matter our skin color. No matter how we look and how we behave, we are coming from one parents, one set of parents, Adam and Eve. So since as a command for the seventh day Sabbath was given to our parents, Adam and Eve, then it is also given to the children. When God gave Moses the tables of stone on which the Ten Commandments were written, he wrote, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This means that it was something they were accustomed to keeping. It is also important to know that when God gave the Ten Commandments at the beginning of creation, the other Sabbath days were not in operation. So God said, remember the Sabbath day. That means that they were doing it. And also, remember... That when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, the other Sabbath days that we are going to be speaking about were not yet in operation. The other Sabbath days were given in the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law is different from the Ten Commandments. We are told in Galatians 4 and verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law, that's the Mosaic law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The seed is Jesus Christ. So the Mosaic law was put in place until Christ should come. If Israel had remained faithful to God, there would have been no need for the Mosaic law. We would only live by the laws of God, which are the Ten Commandments. We can learn about the different Sabbaths in Leviticus chapter 23. Despite the differences between the Seventh-day Sabbath and the other Sabbaths, There is one common bond, and that is every Sabbath is a day of rest. In Leviticus 23 and verse 2, we are told that the seventh-day Sabbath is a Sabbath of the Lord. That's the difference between them. It reads, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, 
a holy convocation, he shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. It is what? The Sabbath of the Lord. That's the difference. God's year begins with Abib or Nisan, according to Exodus 12 and verse 2. This month begins with the new moon nearest the spring equinox. Every month begins with a new moon. That's what God put in place. Mankind has changed it. Let us hear what Leviticus 23, 5 to 7 say about the Passover and the week of unleavened bread. In the 14th day of the first month, at Eve is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days he must eat unleavened bread. In the first day he shall have a holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein. So the 15th day, which is day following the 14th, is a Sabbath. And it is called the I day Sabbath, according to John 19 and verse 31. Jesus was crucified on the 14th of Abib or Nisan. Therefore, in the week of his crucifixion, there are two Sabbaths. May I repeat? When Jesus was crucified, that we carried two Sabbaths. It carried the Ide Sabbath, the 15th of Abib, and it carried the weekly Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath. He was taken from the cross before sunset on the 14th, because God's new day begins at sunset and not at 12 midnight as we are now told in light of this it is important that we place close attention to the teachings of a friday crucifixion and a sunday resurrection the wave offering or first fruits is what we're going to look at next speak unto the children of israel and say unto them when he be come into the land which I give unto you, he shall reap the harvest thereof. Then he shall bring a sheaf of first fruit of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. This is not done in January. It is done after the seven day Sabbath during the week of unleavened bread. What is the purpose of the wave offering or first fruit? What does 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 and 23 say about Jesus? But now is Jesus risen from the dead? And become the first fruits of them that slept. But every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Do you remember that Mary wanted to touch Jesus when after his resurrection when she saw him? But he told her that she could not touch him. She could not touch him yet. Because he had not yet presented himself to his father. After he had presented himself, he remained with his followers for 40 days before leaving. Jesus fulfilled the purpose of the first fruits that were way before God on the first day of the week. We move on to looking at the day of Pentecost which is 50 days after the day of first fruit. Leviticus 23, 15 to 20 tells us about Pentecost. 
Verse 21 tells us that it was a holy convocation in which no work was done. It reads, And he shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. He shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Now, when you hear about no servile work being done, it means that it is a Sabbath. It is one of the Sabbaths under the Mosaic law, not the seventh day Sabbath that God had put in place. The seventh month is Tishri. It is the beginning of the Jewish civil year. What happens then? Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpet, a holy convocation. So the first day of the seventh Jewish month was a Sabbath, whichever day it falls on. It would be a Sabbath, a day that they'll be doing no work. It would be a day of holy convocation. The day of atonement is a tenth day of Tishri, according to Leviticus 23, 26 to 31. Verses 31 and 32 tells us that the day of atonement was one of the Jewish Sabbath day. It reads, he shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. He shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at eve. From even unto even shall he celebrate your Sabbath. Because as I said before, a day starts at sunset, not at midnight. And that's Bible. The Feast of Tabernacles began on the 15th day of the seventh month. The 15th day of this month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein. So it's saying that on the first day shall be a what? A Sabbath. And also on the eighth day shall also be a sabbath when israel began to rebel against god he gave isaiah this message isaiah 1 verse 13 and 14 bring no more vain oblations incense is an abomination unto me the new moons and sabbaths the calling of assemblies I cannot away with. It is iniquity in the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul ate it. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. God was referring to the Sabbaths aligned to the Jewish feast days. What was the purpose of them keeping these days of holy convocation when they were living a rebellious life so god said don't come to me with your festivals because your life is not right so while god reprimanded the people about these feast days he encouraged them to keep the sanctity of the seventh day sabbath ezekiel 31 14 and 15 tells us he shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is only unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, only to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death do you see the difference so he was saying to them the sabbaths pertaining to the feast days the blowing of trumpet on the first day of every month which is a new moon don't come to me with them 
because you're not honoring them those festivals should point to jesus my son coming to redeem you but you are walking in rebellion against me so don't come to me with them however my seven day sabbath that i have put in place if you dare not to keep it then i will judge you for it there have always been disputes between the laws of God and the law and the laws of Moses. During the apostolic ages, the Jews were convinced that the Gentile Christians should follow the laws of Moses. And Paul had repeatedly addressed the issue. As recorded in Colossians chapter 2, 16 and 17, when Apostle Paul was explaining to the Colossian church the differences between these laws. He said, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. To the brethren at Rome, he said, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. To the brethren at Galatia, he said, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if he bite and devour one another, take heed that he be not consumed one of another. Now the Sabbaths which are attached to the feast days that Paul was speaking about, those Sabbaths are irrelevant to us Gentile Christians. That was why Paul said, let nobody judge you in that. Paul was not speaking about the seventh day Sabbath that God had put in place from the beginning of creation. That seven day Sabbath has not been removed. There is no scripture. To tell you that God has put away the seventh day Sabbath. None whatever. It is binding on us. The ten commandments are relevant. And they are binding on us. Whether we be Jews. Yes or no. Because when the ten commandments were put in place. From Genesis time. Yes they were in place from Genesis time. And we'll look at that in further lessons. There were no Jews or Gentiles. We were one set of people. So the commandments were given to one set of people. I hope that you have gained some form of clarity on this issue. And we will continue on such relevant topics. So that we'll understand what the word of God means will not be swayed by the doctrines and teachings of men, but that our foundation be laid in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the foundation that was laid in Christ. No other foundation can anyone lay than that which was already laid. Thank you for your divine word. Thank you for your divine understanding. Thank you for your divine leading. I pray that everyone everywhere will take heed to his or her own way and will seek your face and to keep your ten commandments living by them holy and righteously. Knowing that by living righteously and abiding in the tenets that you have put in place the Ten Commandments, we shall be able to see thy glorious face one day. Help us to recognize and to know that just keeping the Sabbath day holy is not enough for the saving of our souls. 
was that we must live by the entire Ten Commandments. In Jesus' name I pray. This is the Voice of Truth podcast, a media production of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment. Now remember, please like, share, and become a subscriber today.